We're following a developing story in Nicaragua where the country is recovering from recent deadly protests. Nicaraguans rallied in support of President Daniel Ortega. Many have called for peace following two weeks of violence, riots and unrest. Ortega's government triggered outrage after trying to overhaul the country's welfare system. Thousands flocked to the streets to protest the move, which eventually forced Ortega to withdraw the order. For more on this, I want to bring in investigative journalist Carlos Fernando Chamorro. He's with me now from Nicaragua's capital, city of Managua. Carlos, thank you so much for joining us. You have been following the political unrest there on the ground. What's the latest on the situation right now? Well, there has not been more violence since last Sunday night, but we are going through the worst political crisis of Nicaraguan history. We have had the worst massacre since the war times of the, the Contra War, and we are in peace. And during four days of official repression, more than 40 people died, including most of them university students, uh, including one 15-year-old kid, uh, two policemen, and this is a this has been a, a a bloodbath. So many Nicaraguans consider that our president Daniel Ortega is is not uh, capable of governing the country, and he should step out. And what is next then for President Ortega and for the number of people who have been protesting uh, throughout the last couple of weeks? Many of us think that the first step is to establish the truth. Who is responsible for this massacre? Who gave the orders and who executed them? Under the Nicaraguan dictatorship, there is no capability to establish the truth because either parliament or the public ministry are totally controlled by Ortega and they have established a permanent system of impunity. Nicaragua needs an independent truth commission that could be organized either by the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, by the UN, or by Human Rights Watch. But it is, it is really urgent to establish the truth in order to go for the next step. All we need is Ortega to accept an international community uh, that would work with local human rights independent organizations to do this investigation. Is it because that the protesters and activists are unable to achieve any kind of genuine political reform on their own? That's why you need the assistance of outside groups to help. Well, the Ortega's regime has been in power for 11 years and has established a regime of zero transparency, corruption, and impunity. There, there is no single, there is no minimum possibility in Nicaragua to establish justice and truth unless there is national and international pressure. And we, we, we really don't understand how the Latin American governments and the international community have been absent of this crisis in which 40 people have died in the last week. How does President Ortega still have so much support despite the alleged human rights violations. Why does he still have support in the country? As you point out, many leaders in Latin America have not come to Nicaragua's aid. Well, Ortega, Ortega organized a support demonstration yesterday. He had control of public transportation, uh, civil uh, public employees, members of his party. But they were not very enthusiastic yesterday about supporting him. It did, we lived the same story with Somoza 40 years ago, a few months before uh, stepping out of power. Somoza was able to organize uh, massive demonstrations of support. Uh, this is a country which is divided at the moment. But Ortega has lost the monopoly of controlling public spaces on the street for the first time in this a decade, people now have been able to demonstrate freely because in the past they were under repression and under state control. So uh, there is a total uncertainty about what what the, the outcome will be. I'm surprised uh, that given all of these protests that Rosario Murillo, the uh, president's wife, 
has called uh, the protesters bloodsuckers, criminals, and vampires. How are people reacting to that? People reacted uh, with anger. We are living the, the worst George Orwell 1984 scenario. I mean, these, uh, the president and his wife are praying for peace and God and love, and at the same time, they are responsible for this massacre and this repression. So people in the streets, especially the students that were called delinquents, reacted with anger uh, to the words of the president and the vice president, Rosario Murillo. One of the main chants in the streets were simply, they were not delinquents, they were students. Mm. And, and you mentioned at the very beginning of our discussion uh, that Nicaragua has not seen violence like this since the Contra Wars, the Nicaraguan Revolution. Uh, do you think that we could get to that point in Nicaragua again when we saw years and years of bloody protests in the streets? I think there's a big distinction between the uprising against the Somoza dictatorship four years ago and what is going on now against the Ortega dictatorship. This is a, this is a peaceful uprising. This is a civic insurrection. There's no armed groups. There's, no, there's not even visible leaders or organizations. This is a spontaneous, popular revolt against a dictatorial government. And, and everybody hoping, Nicaragua, that we will be able to achieve a peaceful transition. Now, having said all that, there's no sign that Ortega has understood the dimension of this crisis. Uh, all he has said since the crisis has been either threatening the people and at the same time uh, praying to God. So, so there's, a, there's a cynical uh, state uh, approach to this situation that will make things worse. Uh, this is such an important story. I'm glad we are shining a light on it. I'm glad you and others are shining on it, a light on it from uh, Nicaragua. Thank you, Carlos Fernando Chamorro. We appreciate it very much. Thank you.